doing another update on Unreal 4 and unit or um, uh, the Python plugin that uh, I did a earlier video on <clears throat> and I had some some major success with a, a couple things I want to do I'll just run this right now <coughs> And you can see uh, really nothing other than we have this character who is moving around randomly. And every time he moves around, uh, he takes a picture. So this character right here is actually a, a Python character that I uh, put together uh, using the uh, Unreal Python plugin. Let's see if we can do this real quick. Way down here. Nope, can't see it. Nope, there it is. Uh, here's the URL for it. Now it turns out unfortunately that as soon as I picked this uh, plugin up and started getting involved with it uh, they said that they were going to uh, discontinue it. Um, I don't see that in here now. Anyway um, What that, <clears throat> what that uh, plugin allows you to do is create Python characters, Python components, uh, things like that in Unreal, but obviously running in you know, Python. So uh, when you install the plugin, uh, it gives you a nice little editor, and you can uh, create your classes. Now, what is kind of slick about uh, this plugin comes in two different versions and you have to be careful with it. One is an embedded version, and, which means that the Python engine is embedded in Unreal 4. And um, you also have the a non-embedded version. Uh, I, I'm using two different versions of this thing. The non-embedded uh, version allows you to run your own Python environment on your system, which I already have set up. And uh, one of the things I have set up, which is extremely painful to do, is uh, the TensorFlow GPU integration with CUDA. Uh, and the NVIDIA drivers. Uh, but for right now, uh, I'm not, uh, in this demo, we're not using anything uh, with uh, TensorFlow. We're not doing any machine learning uh, uh, stuff right now. What we're trying to do here is basically get a, and what I was able to do is get a, a screen capture of what the uh, Pi character uh, is looking at. And uh, I'm just going to scroll through the code. We'll talk a little bit about it. But the first thing was this uh, transient texture render target. And um, these exist in Unreal. And you have to kind of understand, you know, what they mean. But the cameras in Unreal can render, they have to render to a render target. So uh, that, there's an example of this in one of the uh, Unreal Python plugin demos that I, you know, stole from. Uh, the different the difference uh, that I made was I created obviously this Python character and I hooked up a camera to it and the uh, the, the uh, scene uh, capture component 2d 
and this was a little bit of the secret sauce to get a, an, a hold of this uh, object inside of Python so and set this uh, texture target so uh, obviously this code the the pre initialization has to get run here and so uh, every game tick which you can set uh, we rotate the uh, actor we rotate the character and then we also get a handle to the what the render target what the camera is looking at and then uh, we pull that out uh, using a numpy uh, because that's what we want because we want to be in Python and we want to jam these images into a tensorflow model so we want to have them be in a numpy format and then what I do is I write it out uh, to disk just temporarily obviously the code further on down would have an instance to our model and our model uh, would consume that image and then return maybe steering coordinates or, or things like that so the um, let's see Bear with me. So there it is. Tada! Uh, this is a copy of a PNG that was created and written to disk that verified that this little guy's cruising around the cube and uh, taking snapshots of its environment. So that was a major uh, breakthrough for me. Uh, because uh, I'm just learning this stuff. So there he is right there. And if we go into the uh, this character, blueprint character, we can see the camera. Uh, I created a cube uh, so we could see something when it moves around. And then there's the camera. And this guy is the scene capture component 2D. And that's what we've got to have the other let's see uh, we don't hook anything up to it over here which normally you would do in other programming examples because what we're doing is we are uh, hooking up the uh, transient texture render target when this class gets created uh, so that was kind of the secret sauce that I, you know, figured out how to do because uh, there's not a lot of people that are doing, you know, doing this stuff and you have to fumble around and, and find it out. So there's our guy. The other thing with our guy, our uh, character, is that let's go down here. And I, you got to bear with me. I'm still learning. Uh, un, uh, you, uh, unreal there is a let's see where this guy is there's a let's see we'll go over here okay the other thing I added to this character was a um, an AI module AI blueprint and this AI module, AI blueprint, is attached to the BP uh, or the Pi character BP. And this is the cool thing about um, Unreal that you don't get with Unity is that you can run behavior trees. So I went out and I found a very simple behavior tree. And uh, this is it. You'll see the pie chart. Uh, behavior trees have to have these things called bulletin boards. Little, it's a little tiny bit complex, but you do that uh, to for the uh, behavior tree to be able to write and read data from. Also, inside of the behavior tree, 
there is a task that runs and this is your behavior tree and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on you know what a behavior tree is or how they work that's something that you can look up online but we essentially start a sequence and uh, when you deal with sequences they go from left to right and uh, they, a sequence will run every single one of these unless there's a failure and then it will come back up to the root but uh, basically we have a random uh, movement task that uh, we put together and it goes through uh, it's a little bit you know a little bit complicated here uh, this is where it's uh, it'll take some time to get used to unreal but this is a task that goes and looks at the uh, what they call the nav mesh of the environment and randomly picks out a, a location uh, to move to. Uh, once that happens, we get this node for free. We say, hey, move to the destination. And then we, you know, wait for a little bit. So I understand this is going relatively fast, but uh, these behavior trees can get uh, extremely complicated and have really fascinating uh, uh, emergent behaviors and uh, this is something that you just can't get from Unity not bashing on Unity too hard uh, this project you know it's I'm not necessarily gonna post it unless people get seriously interested in it it's got so many moving parts but uh, you know where we're trying to go obviously is to uh, get agents moving around in Unreal, uh, taking you know images of their environment, running them through uh, TensorFlow, and we're probably going to be doing that remotely, uh, basically sending uh, data out out of Unreal. Uh, over to a, uh, a server process that's uh, running Python. I did show another example of a TensorFlow um, and uh, uh, Unreal uh, Python plugin, <clears throat> but it it doesn't seem to work very well. The integration with embedded TensorFlow is uh, really tricky to get work get to work simply because uh, if you're not using if you want to use GPU TensorFlow uh, it's just, the, just setting the drivers up are a nightmare so this is not a a project that's um, you know we're gonna roll out to a mobile phone or anything like that this is just for research anyway <coughs> um, the the other uh, uh, example that I'm uh, working with right now that I'm running into a little bit of problems. So we've got uh, Unreal Python running in this example. We've got a, uh, a Python char uh, Unreal character built. We've got a behavior tree built. and uh, But this happens to be uh, the the version of Unreal Python which is 4.2.2 that's what it was compiled against and um, you can compile it yourself uh, that gets into you know some kind of serious issues if you gotta have Visual Studio and a, a bunch of other things but what you can also do is just use a 4.23 uh, example so of Unreal uh, Python and uh, that's what uh, I did uh, on this project. So what this project is is the uh, I, when you saw my other videos, I was using uh, the open face uh, utilities and zero uh, MQ uh, inside of Unity to commute. Uh, uh, 
communicate with a, a 3D object, a 3D face on a 3D person. Uh, so I'm trying to replicate that same thing now using uh, Unreal 4 and using the uh, Unreal Python plugin, which you just saw. And uh, I also have a little piece of code working that allows for that Python, uh, building a Python comp uh, component, and it can, inside of Unreal 4, it can reach out to an external uh, Python process and extract information as well as send information, for instance, screenshots, things like that. So what this example is, is trying to find uh, characters in Unreal uh, that have all of the information we need to animate their face uh, using external data points coming from an external process, you know, a Python process running a TensorFlow um, or Keras model. So I've got, uh, I do not have that uh, currently working in this example. This uh, environment does have the Unreal Engine Python uh, 4.23 uh, working. So I'm migrating some of the code over uh, here. The, what, the problems I've run into, this, this is called Kite Boy, you know, this uh, model right here. This came from another Unreal example, which was the Kite Boy demo, which is about five years old. Uh, this this uh, 3D uh, object right here has extensive um, bones and what they call morph targets. Uh, Unity calls them uh, blend uh, blend somethings. Uh, they're called morph targets. Blender calls them something else, but what they are is uh, not only the bones that you can control, but also the uh, uh, the uh, let's see all these things right here. You know these are morph targets that you can control, and you can con if you have a model that somebody's put all the time and effort in, and set all these things up. This is basically uh, the blend shapes. This is basically what uh, I was tr I was controlling in Unity. So now I'm learning how to do that in Unreal. And why are we doing that? Well, obviously we want to have, uh, and you've seen in my other videos, um, you know, talking robots, right? So instead of building a robot, a physical one, we're going to use you know, a 3D, uh, uh, you know, uh, animation, but we're going to control it externally. So let's see, all this thing can do right now is uh, we can just barely uh, control, uh, we're controlling morph targets right now, which are the, the, the mouthpieces. So uh, I'm currently in the process of rigging uh, well, the character is already rigged. It has some animations. Uh, for instance, an idle animation, it does not have. And that's kind of what I would like it to be able to do. Uh, instead of having this T pose, it does have a lot of animations with it. But they're not anything that, you know, I can use uh, with regards to just, you know, having a conversation with a 3D, um, you know, uh, a 3D you know, person on the screen. Uh, there, w there was another example that uh, came with this project that got me real excited. Uh, that controlled morph targets on the mouth. It was like, oh, this is great. The only problem is, is it was only what they call a bust. And um, let's see, let's see if I can pull it up. And it had no bones, no jaw bones or anything like that. So I got halfway into uh, uh, setting this thing up. And then the original example didn't have 
all the richness of the 3D model that I needed. So I figured out how to migrate the Kite Boy model with all the skeletons, meshes, um, textures, everything like that. It's relatively easy to do. I migrated it out of the old project and migrated it into this project because this project is uh, Unreal 4.23. It's also got the Unreal Engine. So once I get the uh, communication hooked up with an external uh, process, I can do what I'm doing right here inside of Unreal, but I can use uh, a, you know, a TensorFlow model. I can move the jaw. I can uh, make this character move around and, you know, simulate, you know, a synthetic, you know, human being. So uh, making a ton of progress with Unreal 4, uh, the Unreal Engine Python, uh, I uh, just, I it takes some time to get um, used to how Unreal works. So anyway, that's a quick update. Uh, we're doing two things here. One is building a Python bridge between Unreal 4 and an external uh, Python uh, server that we can control uh, these models with in real time. Uh, that will give us the advantage of if we want to build any uh, road, you know, if you want to have a car follow a road or something like that, you could use some of the existing code I've got here. Uh, once I get that working, I will post just that particular project. Then you have the other project, which is trying to control these 3D models uh, externally and not using pre-baked, um, you know, motion capture uh, for everything. Uh, some of the, the facial uh, uh, updates will be, you know, using a, a 3D uh, Python program, but we also use some of the baked in uh, animations uh, and state machines inside of Unreal 4. Anyway, that's a huge ramble. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, later on, I, I will try to get this project to where other people if they want to follow along and and build it and get it to do things um you know post the source but the majority of it is is you know going to be relatively simple uh the hard part is all the integration anyway if you know thanks for listening i uh, hope you're all everybody's safe and uh we'll talk to you next time